Okay, so this is the first problem of today's education round. And in this problem, we are given that basically there are there is a weightlifting competition and there are n athletes that are going to participate in this. So the ith athlete has strength SI and has an endurance of EI. So the now Polycarp wants the first athlete to win. So how this competition actually happens? So the jury will choose a positive greater than zero integer W and this denotes the weight of the barbell that will be used in the competition. So the goal of every athlete is to lift this barbell of weight W. So the athlete who lifts the, like, uh, the barbell most number of times is declared the winner and if there are two or more people who have lifted the same number of times then there is no winner. So there can be exactly one winner and that winner is decided by like he or she should lift this barbell maximum number of times like back, uh, more than any other participant. Now if the barbell weight is W is strictly greater than the strength of ith athlete then the ith athlete won't be able to pick, up, pick it up. Otherwise the ith athlete will be able to lift the barbell EI number of times. So let me know how many people were able to solve this problem. Just write a quick yes, no. So we have strength and we have endurance. Like how many people were not able to solve this problem? Write a no. Okay, I think most of you would have been able to solve this problem. So if first, like uh, we want the first person to win. So what is the maximum weight that first person can pick up? It is S of zero. Right. This is the like the strength of the first person. This that is the maximum weight W that the first person can pick up. So you will assume that this is the weight of the barbell. Why? Because if some W less than this satisfies, then this W will also satisfy, right? And we cannot take W more than this. Why? If we take W more than this, then the first person itself won't be able to pick up the barbell once. So we'll assume that W is this. Then for each of the persons from 2 to n, we will check if any person SI, if any person is going to pick up, like if SI is more than or equals to this W, then we will see how many times that this person is going to pick up. If this person, let's say this person is going to pick up the EI number of times, if this EI is more than or equals to E of 0, then the answer is we cannot have any answer. Then in that case, the answer will be minus 1. Otherwise, if there is no such case, our answer will be this S of 0, that is W, this W. Is it clear? Yes, yes no? sir. Okay, so let me show you the implementation. So this is the implementation. Initially, the answer is, okay, I don't know why I have declared this. So I've taken N as input, then I've taken all the S and E, like uh, both of those values. The first one is S and the second one is E for both the like for every player, I've taken this as input. So this is not required. So the maximum is like how many times any participant other than the first participant is going to pick up this barbell. So if S E of I dot FF, FF is nothing but the first value. So that is strength. If the strength of the ith participant is more than the strength of this participant and this first participant's strength is nothing but the weight of the barbell. If the strength of this participant is weight of this barbell, then I'm trying to maintain this MM max. MM max is nothing but how many times any participant other than the first participant will lift the barbell. So this participant, i participant will pick the barbell these many times. I'm taking maximum of this. Finally, I'll check second, like our first participant will pick up these many times a barbell of weight this much. So if this value is strictly more than the MM max, then we can print this as the weight of the barbell. Otherwise we'll print minus one. So I hope this is clear. Is it? Okay. So let's go to the next problem. So in the next problem, we are given that we have a board of size n cross n and two arrays of positive integers a and b. Now our task is to place the chips on the board so that the following condition is satisfied for every ij. There exists at least one chip in the same column or on the same row as the cell ij. 
So now the cost of putting a chip on the cell IJ is equals to AI plus BJ. So for example, if A is this, B is this, we can have chip at this, this, and this cell. So you can pick up any cell in this grid and that cell will be having at least one chip in its row or one chip in its column. Like you can pick any cell. So if we have chip at this cell, this cell and this cell, our cost will be one plus three. For this, it will be one plus two. For this, it will be one plus two. So the total is 10. So this is the minimum value that we can have for this grid. And the, these are the values of A and B. So similarly, we are given N and arrays A and B, and we have to find what is the minimum cost to ensure that this condition satisfies. So how many people were able to solve this problem? So in this problem, the only key observation is that either every row should have a chip or every column should have a chip. If ev every row is not having a chip, like either of these should be true. Every row should have a chip. Should have a chip. Either every row should have a chip or every column should have a chip. Column should have a chip. If any, like this is not also satisfied and this is also not satisfied, then there will at least be one cell that is having, that uh, is not having any chip in its row and in its column. You get this point, right? If none of like every row is not having a chip and every column is not having a chip, let's say ith row is not having a chip and jth column is not having a chip. So there is at least one cell, which is i comma j, which is not having any chip in its row or in its column. Do you get my point? Yes, no? Yes, sir. Okay, so now if every row should have a chip, what, what, what is the minimum answer that we can get if every row is having a chip? See, if every row is having a chip, total value of array A will always come. Total of array A. Right? Yes, no? Because every row is having a chip. Each of these values will come. And now which... Like you can choose only one column which is having the minimum value of bj like the minimum of b array b like this is the this is the cost if every row should have a chip is anyone having any doubt in this total of array a plus minimum of array b is anyone having any doubt in this if i have to keep every like chip in every row then this is the minimum value that i can get total this will always come i cannot have any thing different like any difference in this and here i'll choose the minimum of array b yes no sir but is there any proof that we will get the answer in terms of a summation of a row or a column like i just told you right so first of all the, the these two points are clear right every yes, row sir. should have a chip so this is the case when every row is having a chip so if every row is having a chip this thing will always come right Every row is having a chip. So A1, A0, A1, A2, A3, these all will always come. You cannot have, right? If every row is having a chip, these will always come. Yes, sir. And then you can always pick one column, which is having the minimum value. Why pick two columns? Make, see, what is the value of any cell? It is AI plus BJ. So since every row is coming, so A1, a0, A1, A2, A3, all the way till An minus 1 will always come. So you, you don't have any choice with this. So this like complete sum will come. But you have a choice with this. So how to minimize this Bj, Bj here. So just pick one of the columns which is having the least value. That is one of the least values in array B and add it n times. Why n times? Because this is for all of the, like this, this value is for all the, all these cells. So plus n into minimum of array b. Is it okay? So this is for the rows when every row is having a chip. Is it making sense? Yes, no. Yes, sir. And now if every column is having a chip, then the same thing will happen. Total of array b, every column is having, so total of array b will come n times 
select one row minimum of array a so our final answer is nothing but minimum of these two values so minimum of these two values is our answer is anyone having any doubt in this either every row should have a chip or every column should have a chip if every row or every column is not having a chip then there is at least one cell i comma j which is not having any chip in its row or in its column so if every row should have a chip this is the minimum value that we can get if every column should have a chip then this is the minimum value that we can get so the minimum of these two is our final answer is anyone having any doubt in this Like you can ask me. Don't like. Don't wait for others. They like other will ask some like your doubt, and then it will get answered. If you have, you can ask me. Sir, I just have this confusion that like, can there be any case occurring like suppose di if we take the elements diagonally? Like so why will okay 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 let's take let's take that case. So you are taking elements. You are taking one chip maybe here. One two three four five. One two three four five. So you are you are saying you'll take one chip here, next chip here, maybe next chip here, next chip here, next chip here. So let's assume you are always getting all the array a a i values. Like right? you will always get these values, right? Yes, sir. Some some of these. But why are you picking all the diff all the values of array b? Isn't it optimal to pick maybe every value is same? It's okay. But you you could have always picked the smallest value, right? Okay, okay, so got it. If you could have been here only. Then you you could have picked the smallest value. So why why are you picking like why are you shifting like having one column there, one column here, next column here, maybe another column here? Yes, sir. I so got pick it the now. lowest value always. Yes, sir. So same ways for columns also. When you are having every chip in one column, see these values will always come. So array some of these values will always come. But pick the lowest value of array A. Why have different rows, right? In that case, is it clear now? Yes, sir. Got it. Okay, so let me show you the implementation. This is the implementation in this. I first taken as input, then I have taken array A and B as input. Then these are the two values. X is the value denoted by if like every row is having a chip. So this is minimum of. The, okay, this is for columns. So minimum of array A into n plus sum of all the values in array B. And y is like if every row is having a chip. So minimum of Array B into n plus total of array. A. Finally, we can print minimum of AB. Is it okay? This is clear to everyone, right? So let's go to the next problem. So the next problem is we are given a string s, a binary. So we are given a binary string S, and a binary string is a string consisting of characters zero and or one. Now we can perform the following operations on S any number of times, even zero. We have to choose an integer i between one and S, and then erase the character at i th place. Now we want to make the string S alternating. That is, it should have zero, one, one, zero like this. And our goal is to calculate two values: the minimum number of operations required to make it alternating, and the minimum number of, like, number of different shortest sequence of operations that make s alternating. So first of all, we'll come to this in a moment. But first, how to find this thing? The minimum number of operations required to make s alternating. So first of all, let me know in the chat how many people were able to solve this problem. Okay, so first of all, we have to find what is the minimum number of operations required to make the string as alternating. So how to find this? See, the easiest way is you are getting a zero here, right? So add zero to your some some another string. Now you want the next one. So this is the next one. Now you want the next zero, and now you want the next one. Now you want the next zero. Then you want the next one. All the other characters on which I didn't jump will be removed. You can see it simply like this. Like, how will you like? How can you get? See, you have two two options here. Either to have this zero in your string or not to have this. If you are not having this zero, why? Like, is this zero, like, having anything other like having any character before it which is restricting this zero? No, right? There is no character before 
our this character which is restricting this. So that's why we can directly include this zero in our final string. Like finally, this will be the string. Then this zero is getting restricted because of this zero. This zero is also getting restricted because of this zero. But this one can be added. So like greedily, I'm adding characters. So this one I'll add. This cannot be added. This cannot be added. This zero can be added. This one can be added. Then again zero and then one. You can do it like this also. For you have like zero ones, zero one, zero 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 one one one. So for each continuous zeros, you will have one zero. For each continuous ones, like then continuous ones, you'll have one. Like this will have just one zero. This is just one one. Then for these three zeros, you'll have just one zero in the final place. And this for these two ones, you'll have just one one in the final place. So this is the final alternating string. You cannot have better than this. Like you cannot have a longer string, longer alternating string than this. See, if you're having a longer alternating string than this, that means that you have removed less characters, but you'll have to remove out of these three characters. You'll have to remove two characters. Why? Because if you removed only one character, you're not inserting anything. If you only removed one character, any of these one character, there will be two zeros left. So that's why you'll have to remove two characters out of this. So getting the, getting the string, which is longest, like uh, longest alternating string is easy, right? So we can easily find what is the minimum number of operations, minimum number of deletion, uh, uh, deletions required, minimum number of deletions required. Like how many times we have to delete characters? Is this thing clear to everyone? How to calculate minimum number of deletions required? Yes, no. Yes, sir. So can you tell me how many number of deletions required for this string? It's seven. Is anyone having any doubt? Like how is it four? Can you tell me? Why did you write four? So every, this seven is clear to everyone, right? Seven characters need to be deleted. Finally, you are going to have zero, one, two, three, four, three. Finally, there will be six characters in the alternating string. So we'll have to delete seven characters. And I'm expecting now that everyone can calculate this thing. Like if there are three consecutive zeros, you'll have to remove three minus one. If there are seven consecutive zeros, you'll have to remove seven minus one. If there is just one consecutive zero, you have to remove one minus one. That is zero. You don't have to remove any zeros in that case. So number of consecutive zeros, like minus one is the number of characters that you'll have to remove. Now, how to calculate what is the minimum? Like what are the number of ways to remove this? So see, if you look at example, we have the second thing is second thing is we have to calculate the number of, see, let's pick this example, second example, this one, one, one. So if we have something like one, 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 how many characters do we have to delete? How many characters do we need to delete? There are three consecutive ones. How many characters do I need to delete? I need to delete two. Now. What are the ways to delete this? See, I can either delete the first one and the third one, third one or the first one, first one or the second one, second one or the first one, second one, third one, third one, second one. So there are total six ways. How to calculate this? See, for each 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So for each consecutive, you know that you have to delete here, you have to delete two characters. Here you have to delete one. Here you have to delete. Okay, let's write how many count are there. There are three, three zeros available. There are two ones here. There are two ones here. Three ones here. One zero here. One zero here. One one here. And then there are three zeros here. So out of these three zeros, there will be finally there will be only one zero. Yes, no. Finally, out of these three zeros, there will be only one zero. Yes. yes, sir. So 
can I not say I have to select out of three these three zeros, I have to select one. I have, out of these three zeros, three positions, I have to select one position which will remain. All the other will get removed, right? Right. So number of ways to select one position out of these three is three into two into two into three into one into one into three. This will give me all the positions which need to be deleted. This is not like right now. I just have the one of the like this, like this will get removed. 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 Okay. This and this will get removed. So this will, these are the total number of ways to remove characters. But since if you look here, one, three and three, one, like order also matters. Like first I removed one, then I removed three or first I removed three and then I removed one. This should be three, two. Then I first I removed three or then I removed one or first I removed one and then I removed three is different. So now how many ways are there in which I can arrange these? So factorial of how many, how many things that I'm removing? I'm removing two from here, one from here, one from here. Like how many things I'm removing? I'm just counting that plus two plus two. These are the number of characters that I'll finally remove, right? I'll tell you why factorial, but first of all, it's that some correct. How many characters I'm removing? These are the total number of characters that I'll remove. And why factorial? See, if you're removing X characters, if you're removing X characters, so first you like, uh, you know that I'm going to remove alpha position, beta position, gamma position, delta position, delta, eta, and theta. These are the six places, six positions that needs to be removed. So for the first time you have six options to choose from, like, which will you remove? You will remove this, 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 this. So for the first time you have six options. Now you have chosen one and now you are left with five options so for the five. Next time you have five options to choose with next time, four, then three, then two, and then one. So this is nothing, but this is six factorial. So the total number of characters that you were removing like total number of positions that you will be finally removing. You have to multiply it with factorial of that thing. Why? Because that is the number of ways that you can order. This is the total number of ways that in which you will select the position in which you will have to like select the position, which will be removed. And this is in the ways to order how to remove those actually. Is it making sense? Yes. No. Sir, so instead of using NCR, we can directly use NPR also. Yes, we can use that also, but like uh, I haven't used NCR or NPR anything. This is just multiplication of how many like consecutive things. And this is just factorial of how many characters need to be removed. You can do it like that also. Okay. But is this making sense? Yes. This sir. is three, like. Okay, first of all, with, I'm not sure with NPR how it will work because see, you can remove one character from here, then from one from here, and then again from here. So how will this work with NPR? Maybe like it can, you'll have to. Sir, okay. I think then we'll have to add the all the possibilities of yes, the groups. It won't directly work like this, but this is easy to understand. See, this is the total number of total number of like ways in which you can remove the characters, and then how will you arrange those like operations? First you will remove which then you will remove. see at the end. These are the characters that will get removed. So how many ways there are to arrange this, these operations? Is it okay? Yes, sir. This is more intuitive. So this is clear to everyone, right? Or is anyone having any doubt? So should I show you the implementation or should like anyone wants me to discuss this a little more? If this is like someone is still stuck. Uh, actually, and this will done for all the patches now. Yes, yes, yes. Like, uh, no, no, no. Like this thing is finally how many characters are getting removed. This is just factorial of if X characters are getting removed. 
So this is just factorial of X. And these thing is for every patch. Like for these are the three out of these three, only one will remain. So this is the number of ways to choose like that one place that will remain. This is like out of these two places, just one will remain. So out of these, there are two possible options and one will remain. So what will remain? This is that two. So this is telling me how many number of ways I can choose the characters to be removed. And this is telling me how to arrange those operations, how to remove those one by one. So this is just multiply these two. Is it okay? Yes, no. What about others? Is anyone still having any doubt? You'll have to let me know if you have a doubt. I'll again explain this. Okay. So let me show you the implementation. This is the implementation. I have first taken a string S as input. Then I have taken like this is the size. Then X is the finally how many like X is the finally how many characters will be in my alternating string. Like maximum number of characters that will be in my alternating string. So by default N minus X is the number of characters that I will remove. So count is the current length of the patch. Like how many consecutive same characters I have received till now. And answer is for calculating the number of ways I can remove those characters, like uh, the different sequence of removals. So I'm starting from first index and going till n minus one. If this is the last character, like if this last character is not equal to the current character, then I know that the count, there were count number of elements in the last patch. So last consecutive elements had count number of elements. So first of all, like I'll multiply my answer with this count, take mod, increase my X by one. This means that I can take one more element now in my final alternating string. Then my count is again one. Why? Because this is the start of new patch. Now this is the start of new consecutive elements, like same consecutive elements. Otherwise, if this is like the last element is same as the current character, if the last character is same as the current character, I'll just increase my count by one. Finally, now the last character is this SI. Once I like get out of this loop, now, after like the last patch, like the last number, like I have to work out for these also, right? These are the last zeros. Everything else have like every patch was computed when I received one character, the character, which was not same as this character, but I have not computed for this. So the calculation for the last part is done here. I'll multiply the count in answer. And finally, I'll multiply my answer with factorial of N minus X. So I have like outside my, like you can calculate factorial values, right? It's easy to calculate the, this is factorial of N minus X. Make sure factorial of zero is one. Don't make factorial of zero as zero. So factorial of zero is one. And other than that factorial of two is nothing but two factorial, which is two times one, three factorial is three times two times one. So multiply your answer with these are the number of ways to remove these N minus X characters. Like how will you perform these app operations actually? And earlier, your answer was just having how many ways are there to select to remove n minus x characters. Finally, you can print these are the number of characters that will be removed, minimum number of operations that are required, and this is the number of ways to do it. Is it clear? Yes, sir. What about others? Okay, so let's go to the next problem. Uh, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, I have a general doubt. Like, suppose if the value of a mod is given, so for any computation, we have to use that only, that value yes, of yes, mod. Yes, yes, for every computation, for factorial, also for NCR. If you're using NCR, then that, then also, like, you'll just have to make sure, like, for, I think this was taught, like, for if you're having addition, multiplication, or anything, subtraction, like, You'll use that mod only. The yes, mod sir. Actually, okay. for suppose uh, I was using if NCR. So in that, I have to use inverse. And for that, I have to use binary exponentiation also. So in that values also, yes. I will use this mod only, which yes. is given in the question. Yes, yes. 
Okay, okay, okay. So next is this problem. In this problem, we are given that we have an array a of length n consisting of non-negative integers, and we have to calculate the value of this thing. So this is nothing but for every l from one to n, and every r from l to n, we have to calculate the value of this thing f of l r. f of l r is nothing but the XOR value of the subarray from l to r multiplied by the length of this subarray. And since the value can be very large, we have to take the like the answer. We have to print it. Print the answer taking like this mod. So. See, we have to calculate into length of this subarray that is r minus l plus one, right? So first of all, forget about that. Like this is nothing but this is XOR of subarray, subarray from subarray l to r. Okay. Now forget that you have numbers. Assume that you have just having zeros and ones. So let's say I'm currently at this place. I'm looking for all the subarrays that will end at this place. Since I have only zeros and ones, what what can be my XOR value for any subarray? It will either be a zero or it will either be a one, right? These are the only two possibilities. If I have only zeros and ones in my array, right? So if I'm I'm currently looking at all the subarrays that will end up at this place. So how many subarrays there are which will have which will have non like one as the XOR? All the subarrays that will have one as like this one as the XOR are those subarrays like this ending here which are having odd number of ones inside them, like these two subarrays. If I take even number of ones like this thing now. The XOR of this this thing is zero. So I'm trying. What I'm saying, all the subarrays that are ending here will have non-zero XOR if the number of ones in like number of ones are odd, right? Yes, no. Now let's take this example and now for this also we can do the same thing. All the subarrays which are ending here, how many subarrays? Like, what are all those subarrays which are ending here, which will have like non-zero XOR? The subarray which will, which started here, which started here, okay. which started here, and which started here. So these, right? Yes, no. Yes, no. Like all the subarrays that are ending at this place. Out of those subarrays, these are the subarrays like which are starting at this place will have non-zero XOR. That is, they will have XOR as one. So first of all, how to calculate, like how to calculate the value of this thing now? F of L R into R minus L plus one. So this is one for these for all of these subarrays which are starting at this place. F of L R is one. How to calculate this thing? Can anyone tell me? See, it's just straightforward. Let me tell you how. See, this is this is the point which is having ex like uh, at this point even number of even number of ones are open. So let's to, let's calculate two things: count of even. How many positions have count even of ones? So also calculate total even. Why total even? I'll tell you in just a moment. Then I need count odd. And total odd, like you like if you store these two, you can actually calculate these two. But it's better to store both, like all of these. So count even is at this point I'm having zero like even number of ones because I'm zero because I'm having zero number of ones. So count even is one, and total number of even I'll add just the i. I'll add i to this. I is the index. So later on, if at this place, how can I get the all the like subarrays which are having odd number of 
once i can just do something like i can add count odd how many sub arrays are having odd number of ones into i of this i of this instead of i i will do i plus 1 why because it is r minus l plus 1 right so that's why this one minus total of odd so this is the number of sub arrays like number of places at which i'll have odd number of ones for all of those sub arrays i'm multiplying this i plus 1 and i'm subtracting this so this is the total r minus l plus 1 total of r minus l plus 1 for all the sub arrays which are ending at this place is it making sense can you repeat again from count even like okay, okay. this part so i am saying for each place i'll store like this is my array it is having only zeros and ones so first of all i had to calculate f of l r into length of array length of sub array right length of sub array so I'm ignoring this right now. Why? Because there, there are two possibilities for this. Either this is zero and this is one. So I'm only looking when I have ones, what is the length of sub array? So I'll maintain four variables, count, odd, count, even, total of odd, and let's say total of even. So what are these variables giving me? Count odd will give me how many places in the prefix have odd number of ones the odd number of ones this will give me how many positions in prefix of this are having even number of ones this will give me the sum of indices sum of positions sum of positions or indices which are having indices which are having which are having odd number of ones okay and this will give me sum of position or indices which are having even number of ones so now if i have these four things at any index what i just need i need i need how many places at which like i can start such that i'll get odd number of odd number of ones so what will be the answer at any index it will be nothing but count of odd how many starting places there exist into and for all those starting places they all will end at ith index right like the current sub arrays are ending at i so instead of i i'm doing i plus one why because like i the sub array length is nothing but r minus l plus one so these L are already added in total of odd. So I'll subtract total of odd. So this is the total length of all the sub arrays, which are ending at ith place and are having odd number of ones. Is it making sense now? Like these are like, let's say there are, let's take an example. So for this, what will, what is count odd? So count odd is one here. Count out two, not here, not here. Count out three, count out four. So count odd will be, count odd will be four. Count odd will be four. What will be total odd? So this is zero, zeroth index. This is first index, two, three, this is four and this is five. So four plus five, nine, this will be 10. And now if I use this formula, count odd as four multiplied by I plus one, what is I plus one? What is I plus one in this case? Where is it? What is I plus one? This is six, right? So last index six minus total odd 10. What is it? Six, four, so 24 minus 10. It's 14. So now actually let's look at how did I get this 14? So zero, one, zero, one. 0, 1. So first of all, this is one sub array. This is the another sub array. This is another sub array and this is another sub array. So the length of this sub array is one length of this sub array is two the length of this sub array is five and length of this sub array is six. So six plus five is 11. 
11 plus 2 is 13, 13 plus 1 is 14. So now did you get it? Total odd is having sum of all of these indices. Count odd is having how many places are there. So just multiply count odd into i plus 1 and subtract this. Is it okay? Yes, no. Yes. Yeah. Is it like, okay, if someone said something I couldn't hear. Can you speak a little loud? Uh, actually, uh, like why we are calculating L for R, we have to calculate uh, for all R for particular L. So like what? Why we are calculating? Uh, like uh, in the given question, like for L equals to one, uh, we can take R equals to one to up till N. Yes, yes, yes. So it's same thing, right? You for L, you can go from anywhere. Like these are all the sub arrays. Like you ha have to consider each and every sub array. So instead looking, doing solving like this, why not select the ending point and solve for every, like look how many starting points there can be. Oh. Like how is it different? Then? Yes. Okay. So this thing is clear to everyone, right? So this was the case when I was having just zeros and ones in my, what if I was having zeros and twos, only zeros and twos, or maybe zeros and fours. So instead of just this, you should have multiplied like with this formula, you will also multiply one left shift, left shift, the bit that I'm currently working on. So if the bit is zero, then this was the formula. If the bit is one, then it will become something like two into like, I'm only working for second bit then for the third bit, like solve this problem bit by bit, like for the first bit, then for the second bit, then the, for the third bit. So this way, this is my, I'll multiply this formula with this one left shift, left shift bit. And this is my final answer. Like this will give me my final result. So can I show you the implementation? Okay. So this is the implementation. This is the modulo value. This is n, like I have taken n as input. Then this is my array a. I have taken my array a as input. So this is the final answer. Now, starting from zeroth bit, I'll go up till 29. Why? Because the numbers are less than 10 to the power 9, less than equal to 10 to the power 9. So I'm going from 0 to 29. So for every bit, I have these four variables. Count odd, count even, total odd, total even. And they have the same meaning as I've explained you. So I'll go from one to n. If the current bit is open in my element, first, all the places that were having even earlier, like which were like here, I have explained them like assuming as prefix, like uh, when I was explaining this, these meant from prefix, right? But instead of prefix, we can also like, I think when I solved this, I solved it in the same manner for every I. I count like earlier, if there's one bit open now, so earlier, if there were places, like if I was saying that this is till this place, if I am at ending at this place and till up till if I started this place, I'm having odd number of ones. Now, if I get one more one here and I end at this place now, if I start again at this place, I will get even number of ones, right? So every place at which I started earlier, which was giving me odd number of ones. Now it will give me even number of ones and all the places at which Earlier on starting, I was getting even number of ones. I'll get odd number of ones. So that's why if the current bit is open, if the current bit is set in the number, first I'll swap both of these. Then I'll increase count odd by one. Why? Because I have received one more place at which I have a this bit set. So basically I'm talking about this thing. If I have one more one here, let's say this was something. If I have a one more one here. So first of all, there is one more place like if I start here and end here, like anyway, I'm going to end here only, but if I start here, so there is one more place, which will give me a starting place, which, which will give me odd number of ones. So that's why I have incremented my count odd by one. And I have added this I to total odd. Otherwise, if this bit is not set, I have added one to my count even, and I have added I to total even. Finally, my answer is nothing but one left shift, left shift bit into one long, long into this is I plus one into count odd. Like I have just explained I plus one into count odd minus total odd. You'll have to take mod two times, like once here and then the complete mod. Otherwise you can get like integer overflow. Finally, we can print our answer. So is this thing clear?
yes no anything can you once again explain why we are separating total odd why we are separating total odd okay total odd are like for if all the sub arrays are ending at this place so how many sub arrays can end at this place which will have odd number of ones count odd so for all those count odd r will be fixed count odd r will be fixed r is nothing but i plus 1 now what are all the starting places different starting places that sum is in total odd so this is sum of all those l places so how like i i could have like all the sub arrays that are ending up let's say there are three sub arrays r 1 minus l 1 plus 1 and r will remain fixed right r is fixed r r r minus l 2 minus l 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 so instead of writing it like this we can have count odd as 3 into i plus 1 which is r plus 1 minus l1 plus l2 plus l3 so this sum is in total odd this is count odd and this is i plus 1 is it okay yes so this thing is clear now right so for each bit if we do this we'll have our final answer is it okay yes so uh, one more uh, like doubt yes yes like can we uh, think the situation of like a segmentary of range queries where uh, l2r query will return us the sum and uh, update from l2r saying that uh, from l2r we are storing the value x like you can maybe but like it will like i'm not sure Maybe you can implement it, but it will get much more complicated. I think around 2000 people solved this problem during the contest. So it is, I don't think it is that difficult. Like, uh, like uh, in that also, I have a doubt, like uh, why, how to apply update, like. Okay. Like I said, I haven't actually solved that problem. So I, I also don't know like whether it can be solved that way also. Okay. Like uh, anyway. I'll try to solve this. If I'm able to, I'll like update you in the text section and then you can raise a query and we can discuss it. Okay. Okay. So that's it. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.